different, they are dressed different, they present themselves different, but the concept of Adha Narishwara Vigraha is you look from the top to the bottom or from bottom mm -hmm. to the top, mm -hmm. they are equal. Namaskar. Welcome to Flight Samvada brought to you by the Hindu Temple of Scotland. Today, in the lead up to Shivaratri, we at the temple are going to focus the Shivaratri celebration for this year on the concept of Ardha Narishwara. So we have Dr. Sri Hari with us again back in the show, uh, talking about the concept of Ardha Narishwara, how it came about, how is it conceptualized in the temples within Hinduism, what is the background to it, what is the relevance in the contemporary world. So we are hoping to get Srihari's thoughts on all of these concepts. So Dr. Srihari, welcome again. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Srivas. Uh, namaste and uh, greetings to everyone who is uh, joining us to listen to this. Sri Gurubhyo Namaha, Shivaya Namaha. Shivan Vitaya Namaha, Namaha Shivaya Icha, Namaha Shivaya. Namaha Shivaya. So, we'll start by understanding the concept of Ardha Narishwara. So, can you throw a bit of light on the concept itself? Yes, uh, Srivas, thank you for asking this question. Um, on the 8th of March, we all celebrate Maha Shivaratri. That is the day we all offer prayers staying up all night, offering prayers to Shiva. Very coincidentally, the 8th of March this year also happens to be the International Day of Women. And the entire world will be celebrating the role that women play in the world. And even more coincidentally, the 10th of March is Mother's Day. Mm, okay. So what we have is a, an amazing coincidence of dates with nice. the 8th of March as Mahashivratri and uh, the 10th of uh, March as Mother's Day and the 8th of March is also International Day of Women. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking about uh, the celebrations that we are planning to perform at the temple that evening on the 8th of March, we thought uh, what is one thing that can bring all three together and the one thing in Hinduism that brings in all these three together is the concept of Ardha Narishwara. Fantastic. So that is the uh, celebration that uh, we will be holding at the temple on the 8th of March. And what does Ardha Narishwara mean? What is the concept behind it, the history behind the concept? So Ardha Narishwara, half woman, mm -hmm. half man. Mm -hmm. That is the literal translation of the word Ardha Narishwara. However, when us Hindus talk about Ardha Narishwara, it is not the literal translation of that. Okay. If we Google Ardha Narishwara, mm -hmm. the form that comes out is a Vigraha, a statue okay. that shows both Shiva mm -hmm and Parvati mm -hmm. carved onto one statue, one Vigraha. Mm -hmm. So when I say the word Vigraha, it is statue that we are talking yes, about I for do. the benefit yeah. of yeah. Uh, audience who do not understand that. Yeah. So the, the, the sculpture, the Vigraha has half feminine form and half masculine form. The masculine form is always on the right and the feminine form is on the left. Yes. And that makes it Ardha Narishwara, mm -hmm. half man, half woman. However, that's only a visual representation of the concept of Ardha Narishwara. The, the actual concept of Hinduism is much more beyond okay. the visual representation. How do you represent, how would you represent uh, half man, half woman, mm -hmm. other than the form in which the Vigraha talks? Mm -hmm. But the actual concept behind it is much more beautiful, much more profound, much more deeper than that. Okay, super. And uh, in terms of how it has been studied, in a sense of like, are there specific compositions that are used to 
talk about Atanarishwara, what do these compositions in general bring out? Any, any insights on that? A very beautiful question. There is a whole lot of uh, compositions okay. on Ardhanarishwara and one of the compositions is actually one that's very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. It is uh, composed by Shankaracharya yes. and it is called Ardha Narishwara Stotra. Okay. I think Ardha Narishwara Stotra is a very relevant composition for the chat that we're having today for mm -hmm. the Samvada. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's because everything that we talk about Adha Narishwara, the concept that we were here to discuss mm -hmm. is exactly what Shankaracharya has written in that composition. Oh, so we have all seen the Vigraha, the statue or the photo of Adha Narishwara with uh, the Shiva on the right and uh, Parvati or Uma or Durga mm -hmm. on the left. Mm -hmm. The if we if we break the stotra and then also reflect on the vigraha, mm -hmm. there are awesome themes that come out. <laughs> I won't touch on all the themes, but I'd like to start making us think of some of the themes that are coming out. Um, we talk about uh, the forms, then we talk about the look. Okay. When we talk about uh, uh, Vigraha, we talk about the beauty and the elegance and the and the opulence and the ornaments that are deities wear. Okay. And when we look at a Vigraha, we also look at what is the message that they are giving us. Okay. And the Ardhanarishwara Stotra essentially focuses on all this. Okay. It starts off by saying, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up some of the key words from the, uh, from the composition. Uh, composition. Okay. Champeya Gauratha Shirirakaya Karpura Gauratha Shirirakaya. The second line talks about the hair. Okay. Hair of the Devi. Devi. The, the deities. Okay. Parvati, her hair is beautifully braided. Okay. Beautifully braided. It's a, a, a work of art. Okay. And you look at the other half of the statue, totally unkempt hair, mm -hmm. completely unkempt hair. Shiva has never, never groomed himself. Mm -hmm. We know that. The only day he Shiva groomed himself was on the day of his wedding. Right. The rest of the days he's never. So it, that, that's how the stotra starts. Okay. So when you look at it, you'll be awestruck by the beauty of the braid on one half okay. and totally unkempt Loose. hair mm -hmm. on the other half. Mm -hmm. The second stanza talks about the things that they've put on themselves. Okay. Shivaye, mm -hmm. Durga, mm -hmm. she is wearing a very beautiful tilaka made of uh, kumkuma. Okay. Kasturi, kumkuma, charchitaye. Okay. And what is Shiva wearing? Mm -hmm. Shiva has gone to the crematory. Okay. He's oh. picked up the ashes yes. and he's put ashes on him. On himself. It's a, it's a big symbolization of duality of like celebration, beauty and sort of glory and all of that in one side and the other side sort of, okay, it's, it's a brilliant picturization of duality. Isn't it? Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at, look at what uh, I mean, we, we talked about uh, Kasturi, Kumkuma, Charchitaye mm -hmm. and for Shiva, we say Chita, Chita is it yeah, yeah. Chita, Rajaha, Punjava, mm -hmm. Charchitaya. Mm -hmm. It's, it's beautiful. So yeah. that is the difference between the two halves, okay. the Ardhanarishwara. Okay. There's a big, probably big underlying philosophical message of like one is sort of the triumph side of or victory, positive side of the things and then the other is sort of destruction all of that. So kind of bringing both into the same conversation almost in that sense. Absolutely. Right? So, so we, we, so, and it does, it does not stop there. Okay. It moves to the actual physical form and the appearance. Oh, nice. If you look at Durga, the composition says Vishala mm. Nilotpala okay. Lochanaya Vikasita Panke Ruha Lochanaya. Okay. The Durga's eyes are Vishala Netra, very big eye. 
beautifully formed eye and we know Shiva um, is very focused yeah. and three-eyed, yeah. very focused. Yeah. Yeah. And then comes the most uh, smart and clever uh, description of uh, this duality that you mentioned earlier. Okay. Shankaracharya says, on one side you have such a well-formed eye mm. and on the other side you have an eye that looks very, very uh, not right. Okay. You know, that's the way to put it. Okay. This does not look right. Okay. Three-eyed, this mm. does not look right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay? So that's when he says, Samekshanayecha Vikshamekshanaya. Okay. That is Samekshana, very beautifully formed. Okay. Vikshamekshana, oddly formed. Okay. That mm. is the beauty of what he's trying to mention. Okay. So that's the beauty of the form. Okay. Now we talked about a murti, we talked about the alankara, the decoration, mm. we talked about the form of the murti, we talked okay. about the eyes, say, for yes. example. Yes. And then, our date is always we are something. Okay. Okay. If you look at uh, Durga, mm. she's wearing a beautiful garland made of the most beautiful fragrant flowers that there are. Yes. And what is Shiva wearing? Mm. Kapala, skull. Mm. Skull. So that is the, again, the difference in the duality. Okay. And this is how they look, mm -hmm. that's what they're wearing, and that's how the Alankara is. Okay. But what is their purpose? Mm -hmm. What is the key message that they're giving us? Okay. Durga mm -hmm. is very happy mm -hmm. when there is creation. Okay. Prapancha Srishti San Mukha Lasya Kali. Okay. She feels so happy when there is creation. Okay. Things are evolving. And what is Shiva doing? He is Tandava mm -hmm. for destruction, maintaining the balance. Okay. So that is the purpose of these. Uh, uh, that, that's, that's the role that both each other are playing to support each other. Okay. And if you look from here on, if you look at Devi and mm -hmm. you look at uh, Shiva, mm -hmm. they're looking different, they're dressed different, they present themselves different, but the concept of Adha Narishwara Vigraha is you look from the top to the bottom or from bottom mm -hmm. to the top, mm -hmm. They are equal uh, in terms of height, in terms of height, in terms of status, in terms of what oh, they do. Okay, okay. They are equal. Okay, so there's duality and equality. I mean, duality, so that's okay. Yes. Nice. They are equal. They are perfectly balanced. Okay. And that is, to me, it is that equality and that is a balance that comes out of uh, the Ardha Narishwara Vigraha, okay. which fascinates me. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. Super. So, so uh, this uh, composition, I mean, uh, is there something in the composition or elsewhere in the description about Adha Narishwara which gives us any messages or relevance for the contemporary world? I mean, so one couple of things which kind of comes out from what you've already said is treating both the glory side of things and the sort of uh, sadder side of things almost with equal uh, balance in that sense. The other is probably the equality of man and women. So there's probably that in there. Are there anything else that are kind of coming about or even this being talked about in greater detail within the composition or elsewhere? So the main take home message for me mm -hmm. when I recite Alhana Rishwara Stotra and I reflect on it mm -hmm. is it is entirely okay to be totally the opposites. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But there is always a common ground and a common purpose, okay. and you achieve that. Okay. And you work that's, towards that's that in any relationship. Interesting, okay. In, in any relationship. Mm. The second thing that really fascinates me or is Ardha Narishwara, I think, very firmly sends a message out of gender equality. Yeah. If there is one, if there is one idol or vigraha or yeah. visual representation of gender equality that I have to pick in Hinduism, it is Ardha Narishwara. Yeah, it is not because of the appearance of vigraha, it yes. is the message mm -hmm. that the vigraha is giving. Yes. You are totally different from bottom to the top, but the man and the woman are equal, equal gender equality. 
I think that is the key message that Arjun Ayurveda gives us. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, any closing thoughts which you have on the concept, its contemporary relevance, anything of that sort? Um, the concept is gender equality. Okay. And I think whenever we offer prayers to Shiva, we offer prayers to Shakti. The first verse mm -hmm. of Saundarya Lahari, Saundarya Lahari is a very beautiful yes. composition, yes. half of it written by Ganesha and half of it by Shankaracharya yes. himself so again. Comes back again, yeah. Comes back to Shankaracharya again. The very first verse mm -hmm. of uh, Saundarya Lahari, Shiva, mm -hmm. Shaktaya, Yukto, Yadi, Bhavati, Tataha, Prabhavitum, Nache Devam Devo Nakhalu Kushalha Spanditumati. The summary of that is Shiva, man, mm -hmm. is useless, mm -hmm. can't do anything mm -hmm. without the support of a woman, Parvati, mm -hmm. standing by his side. Okay. So I think that is the that is the contemporary reflection that I would like to take away with on this. Fantastic. I mean, I think in a couple of episodes before, we talked about the Shanmata Stapana, where we talked about Shiva, Shaiva tradition, Shakta tradition, this sort of in a nice way brings both these traditions together. And, and Shankaracharya has a very big national integration role as well as uh, sort of religious integration role where he kind of brought together different sects and then the fact that he had contributions to Saudi Lahiri itself is a reflection of him being able to bring both the Shaiva, Shakta traditions into a single composition and, and Atana Ishira. So really, really fascinating insight. So thank you so much uh, Dr. Srihari for sharing all these insights with us. Uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more such insights in future episodes. Thank you so much. Thank Namaskar. you very much, uh, Shubham. Namaskar.